When I saw that Oliver Stone was directing a movie about Edward Snowden, I was intrigued. Not just because it's a topic that interests me, but because it's a subject that was covered by one of the best documentaries made in the last several years. Citizen Four, the documentary, was released just two years before Oliver Stone's movie Snowden. It's not just a documentary about Edward Snowden, it's a documentary that's tied directly to his story and his actions. Laura Portras, the creator of the documentary, was one of the journalists that Snowden first contacted to get the leak underway. Because of this, I was curious to see how the movie would approach the scenes featured in the documentary. We know movies based on true events are dramatized, but rarely are we given such a clear comparison which we can use to see how things are dramatized. Oliver Stone's movie seems like an attempt to present the story of Edward Snowden in a way that's more palatable to the general audience. While Citizen Four sought to create context for its core events, it remains somewhat inaccessible to those without at least a little understanding of its context. Stone presents a modified version of reality. Events are changed, usually mildly. This is the only alligator. We will meet in the hallway outside of a restaurant in the Mira Hotel. I will be working on a Rubik's Cube so you can identify me. Uh, what time does the restaurant open? Approach me and ask if I know the hours of the restaurant. I'll respond by stating that I'm not sure and suggest you try the lounge instead. Noon. But the food's a little too spicy. I'll offer to show you where it this is, way. and at that point, we're good. You simply need to fall naturally. He pulls ingredients and ideas from the documentary footage, sometimes replicating specific moments. Can you start by telling us why you did what you did and uh, how you gained access to such a vast amount of information, all of which I've read on the plane? I basically woke up this morning and already started writing stories. Um, so I'm hoping to, you know, start publishing with them like a day or two days. Okay. Um, as long as you're good with that. Yeah. Um, and... Um, and... I Glenn. Other moments are more dramatized. So I don't know who you are or anything about you. Okay. Um, I work for, uh, Booz Allen Hamilton. Before we get onto the stories, I need to know more about you. Now, you, your career by... Uh, Glenn's account is very varied, but uh, The Guardian needs evidence. Uh, defense contractor. Uh, I'm at, sort of on loan to NSA. My diplomatic passport for friendly countries, my tourist passport for everywhere else. You can check that. Visa stamps. This is my NSA badge with Booz Allen, my CIA badge with Dell, and this is my DIA instructor's badge. Uh, so, I don't know your name. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I, uh, my name is Edward Snowden. Uh, I go by Ed. And some are the opposite of reality. We seriously have to think about doing this on our own website. We have no choice. Well, you can't just start dumping articles on the internet, Glenn. Be serious. Look at WikiLeaks. It destroyed their credibility. Then The Guardian did WikiLeaks. Technical people set up <laughs> yeah. a system so that it were available for anybody to see. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if it's possible to do the same thing. That, that would be the ideal end yeah. game, um, but because because some of these documents are legitimately classified in ways. A scene that sticks out to me particularly is one where Stone chooses to show some shots from the point of view of the fictional Lara's camera. These shots are color graded to look more like camcorder footage and are shot with a more observational handheld camera style that has come to be somewhat of a stylistic shorthand for what a documentary should look like. The irony here is that in real life, only a little of Lara's footage looks anything like this. There are moments of shaky handheld footage in Citizen 4, but they're relatively short and constrained. A majority of the footage in the documentary is fairly steady. Her documentary actually appears fairly cinematic by some standards. Stone uses shaky handheld footage to indicate to the audience this is documentary footage. Lara uses steady, well-framed, and lit shots to give her documentary a more cinematic and dramatic feeling. The lines between the narrative form and the documentary form are blurred. The exteriors of Hong Kong serve as excellent transitions in both the movie and the documentary, and both use news programs as a means of exposition. Internet companies including Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, AOL, Skype, YouTube, 
and Apple. With reality TV, YouTube vlogs, mockumentaries, and historical dramas, the lines between documentary and fiction have become increasingly blurry. While I think Oliver Stone is mostly responsible in his fictionalization of this story, as viewers, we need to be smart and discerning. Fiction can look like reality, and increasingly reality can look like fiction. We can't simply judge the authenticity of something in a film by whether it feels genuine and true to us as the viewer. Even when they're mostly factually accurate, like Stone's movie, adaptations from true stories are still fiction. Many contemporary dramas are attempting to inform us in engaging ways, and documentaries are becoming more dramatic and enticing. As audiences, we need to view both with a critical eye. Yes? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Asking for what? Turn down service. She said the do not disturb sign was off the door. Hello? Yes? Uh, my meal was great, thank you very much. Yes? I'm Thomas Flight, this has been another video for Off The Screen. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it and hit the subscribe button to see a new video each month.